Have you noticed that the weather has been hotter than usual? Have you heard about the rapidly growing volume of the first station or melting polar ice caps? The awareness of climate change and other environmental concerns has increased in the last decades. The United Nations Conference of on Environment, also called the Earth Summit, uh, held in 1992, came up with a global plan of action called Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is composed of 40 chapters that propose solutions towards a sustainable development. Sustainable development is the responsibility of every government and all social groups should be involved in. Chapter 31 is all about science and technology. Scientists have responsibilities to search for knowledge and to help protect our world. My friends and I are going to tell you how scientists are trying to find non polluting energy sources and also ways of reducing the energy consumption. So, even in the 1940s, the scientists were looking ways to reduce the amount of energy used in agriculture. So, to do that, they came with a project called the New Revolution, where they tried to reduce the amount of water used in agriculture, but also tried to reduce the world hunger. So, to do that, uh, they tried to grow uh, two crops a year. And to do that, they used top quality seeds, and they had to improve the irrigation system. So, the New Revolution, apart from being a huge improvement of the amount of crops, it was also uh, a huge improvement in the irrigation system. So now let me tell you all about the advantages of the New Revolution. As you can see in the picture, the main advantage was that it was a huge improvement in the amount of growth during the years, but also what it was a huge uh, amount of water that was saved from the improved irrigation system, and also by improving the uh, tools in agriculture, they reduce the amount of work the humans had to do in agriculture. So now let's talk about the disadvantage. As you can see in the picture, there are five main disadvantages. The first one is the diversity loss, because they start using only one kind of crop. The, the second one is the erosion of the soil, because they overuse this soil by growing crops twice a year. The third one is the air pollution, because by using the agriculture, uh, the agriculture tools, they were sending uh, greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. And the third one is the water contamination because of the chemical products added to the crops. And the last one, and probably the most important, is that the Green Revolution will lead to an overpopulation of the world. So now that I told you a way the scientists have found to reduce the amount of energy used in agriculture, my friend is going to tell you another way to reduce the amount of energy used in agriculture. Okay, as my friend said before, another way of reducing energy consumption is hard designing, which is a new kind of design used in uh, building houses, which tries to keep uh, energy safe and also tries to reduce the amount of energy used in house. So, firstly, when designing a house, first thing, first thing you have to think about is the placing of the location. If the location you want to build the house is in a cold weather place, uh, the orientation of the house must be so the light of the sun enters as much as possible into the house. So it's going to be hot inside and cold outside. And if the place you are going to build the house is in a hot weather place, you must place the house so that the heat of the, the light of the sun enters as little as possible to the house, so the house is going to be a normal temperature inside and hot outside. Then, uh, an important system of the house designing is the insulation system, which is composed with the insulation of the windows and walls insulation. And in the windows, it's a special kind of window with three glasses that keeps the heat or the cold inside the house and keeps the hot or the cold outside of the house so it maintains, it keeps separated the hot, the hot and cold in both places where the weather conditions and more or less the same with the wall 
insulation system, which is composed with different materials. So it happens the same that with the window. The so the main advantage of this house designing is that if you use all of such uh, systems, you could uh, save a lot of energy at home. Okay, so now the main disadvantage of this house designing is that for building these houses, you must make a very big investment because all of those systems cost a lot, but if you just use uh, one of them or a little portion, you will have more or less the same uh, shape of energy than if you use all of them. So the main disadvantage of this house designing is that all those systems... So now that we have seen a few ways of reducing the energy consumption, uh, we are going to see a few ways of uh, producing a, a renewable energy. As my friend said before, I'm going to show you a different ways for, of producing renewable energy. This one is called wave energy. It consists in use the wave energy to produce electricity. Okay, let's see how it works. Okay, waves move this rotor up and down, and it produces uh, mechanic energy. And this mechanic energy uh, is transformed into electricity. This electricity is transmitted via a standard underwater cable to land and goes to your houses. And as we see here, the energy with energy potentially as big as hydropower, up to uh, 15,000 uh, generally worldwide. And now, the main disadvantage is that uh, this way of producing energy is not available. Um, another disadvantage is that it, it has a visual and, and noise pollution and it damages the ecosystem of the world. And another disadvantage is that because um, because of the water, the manufacturer needs to be changed uh, <coughs> some, uh, oft, very often. And now, uh, my friend uh, is going to tell you a different way to produce renewable energy called solar energy. As my friend said, now I'm going to tell you another type to produce renewable energy that is, that is a solar island. This concept is created by a Swiss enterprise and solar island has um, the goal to create electricity with solar rays and ocean water. Each solar island has 5 kilometers diameter and has to 20 meters tall and 100 mirror panels. Also, its island has a very big pipe circuit system and they are expected to work 25 years. Its island creates energy uh, using thermal solar systems when the mirrors catch the, the solar rays and the water, the, the ocean water comes into pipe system, the steam, cre the steam created moves a turbine that produces electricity. Now I'm going to tell you the main advantages of Solar Island. Solar Island can produce uh, up to 1 gigawatt uh, of electricity. And it has a low, low cost and also the, the energy the solar island can be supplied at night. The, the disadvantages of solar island are that the maintenance becomes more difficult and they have problems with the salinity that causes faster deterioration and also they have problems with strong winds or strong storms. Now I'm going to tell you another way of producing renewable energy and this is hydroelectricity. Hydroelectricity is the 
most important renewable energy of the world and it's the 19% of the total amount of energy produced in all the world and the main hydroelectric power plants are made in China that which is this that we can see in the picture and it's named the Three Yards Dam. Uh, it has a uh, it has or more than two kilometers wide and almost 200 meters deep. And another uh, main hydroelectric power plants are in Canada or Brazil. Now I'm going to tell you how it works. First of all, we have to build a dam, and then when we have the water level, when the water level is right. We can open the gate and the water is going to push to pass through this pipe and then it's going to reach the turbine. The, when the water reaches the turbine, it, it spins at a great speed and makes, makes a spin at the same time the rotor and the stator, which forms the generator and that, because of elect electromagnetism, creates electricity and then this electricity reaches our houses. Now I'm going to tell you some advantages and disadvantages of this kind of electricity. Uh, since the main advantages are that it's a renewable energy and it doesn't pollute the atmosphere. And another advantage is that it can be more developed than now so we can produce a big amount of energy. For example, the three years dam can produce as much as electricity as a nuclear power plant, as a big nuclear power plant. And that's all for about advantage. And the main disadvantages are the, the building costs that are very, very expensive and also that we can't make, we can't use this kind of electricity in all places obviously because we need the rain. And finally, the last disadvantage is that we flood uh, the the near part, the near area of the land. And now the question is what can we do? Okay, first of all we should follow these uh, easy energy saving habits, such as Compound appliances, switch off TVs and stereos, use web apps. For example, you can walk to school or use apps for public, use appliances against use a light wireless, and we can choose a clean power uh, supplier. And the most important thing is to reduce and recycle. Think about it.